Hey, what's up everyone? I'm the Crimson Cypher. Welcome to part 4 of my ranking of the Monster and Monsters. Last time in part 3 we went over monsters that I think are okay. And currently in this part, we're going to be talking about monsters that I think are pretty good. They're not the greatest by any means, but monsters that I think are pretty good, pretty solid. So with that being said, let's not waste any more time and let's jump right into it. Picking off today's episode, we have the Agnactor. The Agnactor is a pretty fun fight, and especially in f the third gen when you first fight it. Agnactor uses its hardened lava or magma on its body to, as a way of armor. Much like Lavasioff as well, but L Agnactor just does it so much better than Lavasioff, which is what I mentioned beforehand when I was talking about it. Agnactor can be very challenging if you're not prepared, especially with its beam attack. When you hear that clack clack for the first time and it fires off that beam in a spread, that thing can really do some major damage. The Ignactor also has the ability to go underground or even up in the ceiling and dive down into you. It's a pretty fun fight. I do love the Ignactor very much, so. What do you get if you cross an elephant with an eye eye, a flying squirrel, and an animal that has large massive ears that he uses to make a mask? You got the Catcher Watcher. The Catcher Watcher is the weirdest looking creature in the Monster Universe, at least in my opinion. Yeah, we've seen some creepy monsters and some pretty overall disturbing ones, and pretty cool designs, but the Catcher Watcher isn't any of that, it's just weird. But that's why I love it so much. Much like the Bishatin, the Catcher Watcher uses some pretty weird movements and has a weird variety of moves. The trunk on its uh, face uses it to spit out these like globs of water. The wings that it has can be used to uh, fly, obviously. And the ears can fold down to make a mask, which is incredibly cool. Next up is Almadron. Almadron is a bit of a weird monster. It's not one of those monsters that I liked so much, but compared to everything else, it is pretty cool. Though its tail is a little bit disturbing to me. I don't know what it's meant to be. It, to me, it looks like kind of like this weird shrimp thing, or like this uh, krill. If you know what I mean. Like, it looks like the kind of body of a krill, but like as a tail. The Almadron uses mud, and it can terraform the earth around it. And it's really fun to fight with that. And you can even use the walls of muddy, like, create to, like, kind of get around and, like, jump off of. It's actually a pretty fun fight in that regard. However, the Almadron's not my favourite in Rise. It's, like, close to, like, it's, it's, like, top five in Rise, but it's still, compared to everything else, so, like, that we have going on, it's not my favourite. It's still a good fight. The Drabros might be just the most peaceful giant monster in monster history. It's a herbivore, so obviously it's not going to be directly attacking you as a like as a hunter. Though it does, well, it will, but it doesn't do it out of like you know trying to eat you or anything. It's doing it to like protect itself. The Drabros has one main attack, and that is its tail. You use it to swing around like a hammer. And it uses it to launch itself up in the air and slam down onto you. It can also do a lot of ramming attacks and stuff, but I think this thing is so peaceful and so elegant when it's flying around. It's actually really fun to fight, and using a hammer is the best way to even fight this thing. Considering the fact this is one of the few monsters out there that you don't need to use a, a sword to cut its tail off. That's why I think the Drabros is so cool.
Next up, we have Shogun Sinatar. This is another, uh, like, crab-like monster, like Daimyo Hermitar. Except this time it has, like, these sickle, like, scythes as it, at its, uh, claws. The, the Shogun Sinatar is pretty, pretty cool. It's faster than Z Daimyo Hermitar, and it uses more speed than anything. And its cutting attacks can even cause bleed, which is one of the first, one of the few monsters who actually causes it. Sure, the Shogun Sinatar on its own isn't really that interesting, but when it actually gra grabs out its Gravio shell, it actually uses it like as a sort of way to fire off a beam of like water from its back. That's pretty cool. The Shogun Sinatar is just good. I wouldn't say it's amazing. I wouldn't say it's the best thing ever, but it's very cool. Other than looking absolutely amazing, Wind Serpent Ibushi doesn't really have much going for it. Yeah, its fight is pretty okay with all the wind abilities that it uses, but let's face it, this thing is just a worse version of a Matsu. And we'll be getting over to a Matsu very, very later on. Let me tell you that now. The Wind Serpent isn't really important to fight, especially in Rise. In fact, this thing isn't even necessary to fight, I don't think. At least from what, what I can understand. Well, at least from what I might remember, at least. The Wind Serpent isn't also that fun for me. Launching yourself into the air with the, like, the wind sort of currents that it creates is very annoying. But I will say that is quite a fun fight if you get used to it. Ah, the Rathalos. Monster's greatest icon. A memorable face in the franchise, and it's one of the first monsters to ever be introduced. It's, a, it's one of the uh, front, like, flagship monsters in the first games. I mean, what's not to say about Rathalos? Except for the fact that it's literally just a Raffian that's better looking, in my opinion, and has a different moveset. Instead of its tail swipe, or the tail flipper I mentioned with Raffian in the last video, Rathalos uses its claws to inflict ta uh, poison on you. And that attack alone, for me, I don't know whether it's just me thinking this, I thought this attack was a homing attack. Because this thing just locks onto you and does always hits its mark, even when you dodge out of the way. The best way to avoid that attack is to Superman dive. But other than that, the Rathalos is pretty cool. When it was revealed that Espinas was going to be in uh, Sunbreak, I was amazed that Capcom would actually put in a Frontier Monster. So let's hope that more Frontier Monsters come into the new games. Though that's going to be unlikely, I would say it has a chance, now that Espinas has made that apparent. Espinas' whole gimmick is charging, charging, much like Diabolos and Monoblos, except for the fact that Espinas has a better design and a better gimmick with its fire. Yes, it can shoot fireballs, but also that fireball, that one little fireball, can inflict both poison and paralysis. Y'all know how I hate paralysis. But with Espinas, it's okay, because it's easy to dodge the fireballs, and it doesn't inflict paralysis without it. Wolf Taroth may, be, may just be one of the best siege fights in the entire Monster series. Wolf Taroth has this gimmick of using multiple uh, group of hunters in one quest. If that doesn't make any sense to you, don't worry. It, it, does, it didn't to me either when I first figured it out. But like, when you think about it this way, you need to have a group of 16 hunters to actually fight this thing. This thing is immensely powerful. But, and Call of Trops fight, yeah, it can be slow from the start, but when you get into it, the fight gets really heavily impacted and gets picked up very quickly. The Call of Trops is also got one of the best designs, being coated in this uh, molten gold, and when it gets heated up, it looks so much better as well. It's one of my favourite siege fights.
Many of you might be surprised to see Kushala Deora this high up on the list, but let's face it, Rise made Kushala Deora an actual fun fight. It's not infuriating as it used to be, and that's why it's been picked up so, so lower down, or higher up I mean. Kushala Deora would have been like in the top 80, maybe top 90 if I had to choose, but now it's definitely picked up in like the top 60. So, what made Kushala Deora annoying? The wind, okay, let's face it, the wind that it produced pushes you back all the time. For someone like me who uses like long swords, hammers and great swords, this is a very annoying fight. But now it's so much fun to do in Rise. So let's face it, I'm going to be facing Kushala Deora more in Rise often. I have a very severe case of arachnophobia, and arachnidaki is just that, an arachnid or a spider coated in its webs to make this kind of like dress-like thing on its body. But here's the thing, right? Spiders in Bonsana are some of the best monsters in the entire series. Arachnidaki is amazing, using its uh, younger, more like, I guess, would they be children? I guess they you. The, she uses them as like a way to get around and move about and they even use it as like a sort of like a, like an artillery sort of thing where they fire off the, their flamethrowers at you. Ragnar Kadaki is one of the coolest fights in Rise in my opinion and its subspecies is even better in my opinion. But it's not the best spider though. Remember the Celtus back in like part one? Meet the Celtus Queen. This thing is absolutely amazing. Uses utilizing the Celtus in a way that just combines the two into this one massive, like fusion of the two. I say fusion. They're two separate entities that utilize their abilities together in the same fight. The Celtus Queen is massive, okay? And the Celtus. It put, perked up on the top, or perched up on the so top of the Celtus Queen's head and uses its sides to attack you while the Celtus Queen just charges at you and uses its massive body to absolutely demolish you. The Celtus Queen also has this attack where it slams the Celtus down and even tries to like, I don't even know if it eats or anything, it just kills the Celtus, which is really morbid but cool. Many find Magnamalo to be one of the most disappointing flagship monsters, and you're not wrong, it's not the best flagship out there, but if I'm being honest, it's not that bad. It's one of the best designed monsters in my opinion, and considering the fact that this thing has purple fire, it's amazing. I love the abilities this thing has as well, using its tail almost like this kind of like wand sort of thing, to kind of fl like flow around the fire around it and just shoot it at you. That's so cool. And yes, even the like powered up form of Magnamalo is so cool, but monsters have done it before, much like Magnamalo, especially one in particular, and they did it so much better. And yes, they are also a flagship monster like Magnamalo. I'm gonna get so much hate in the comments for this, but I find Fatalis' fight to be super boring. Yes, the story behind Fatalis and the design is amazing. It's one of the best design monsters in monster history, let's be real, okay? Yes, it's basic in design, but god damn does it work. But Fatalis in itself, to me, is the most boring fight in my opinion. World made it better, but... I've never faced it in World, or Iceborne, should I say. And people are be like, you, sh you should fight in World or Iceborne. I'm like, yeah, I should, but I haven't been able to do so yet. I'm not the greatest hunter, so obviously I'm not going to be able to get to everything, you know, as soon as everyone else will. But, Fatalis is okay. It's not 
not too bad. But I, I do love it at the same time. Sadeus is one of those fights that I either really like or really dislike. Sure, it's an underwater fight, yeah, but I mean, to have a final boss or to have like a major fight be mainly underwater, in fact, it is all underwater. You have to face this thing the entire time, taking like chunks out of its beard off as it strolls through the pathway. And then when you get enough out of it, it goes into this one like side area and that's where the true fight begins the fight just picks up in intensity and it actually starts to fight you it's not like one of those monsters that just sits there and takes the hits and you have to like do m enough damage to repel it this thing actually fights back and it is an awesome fight to, to be a fight that's underwater specifically Cantor, see here's the thing, a Cantor is a cool fight, it's a cool design, I love a Cantor, the only problem with it, and I think is a lot of people's problems, is that this thing is very, 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 very annoying. Okay, yeah sure, the whole like, giant size is one thing, but like, let's face it, when, you're char when it's charging at you, the hitboxes for this thing are so out there, in my opinion. And it's raw, like that, like, almost like kind of vacuum, not vacuum wave, but like, sort of like this gust of, like, immense, like, uh, air that it fires at you from its mouth that it uses in a sweeping beam is so powerful. Other than that, the Ancantor is actually a pretty fun fight. It's not too challenging, and it's pretty fun. Out of the three monsters that are based off of like um, horror, not horror, but like kind of uh, monsters within like, you know, like Dracula and like the, the mummy and stuff like that. This is the one monster that just utilizes their theme a little bit too weakly in my opinion. The Garago was based off of Frankenstein, which is a cool concept. You, and it does use multiple different things to kind of coat its body and like it's made up of like different parts of like you know, magma on one hand and like water and like moss on the other to like utilize and create different uh, element like a new element or or utilize both elements should i say but the garen gomes theme overall compared to the other two is a lot weaker than the others in my opinion not saying it's bad i just think it's weak in that that aspect Obi Kadachi is like if you fuse Nagakuga with Zenoga, put them together, and you have this, which is amazing. But I don't like it compared to Nagakuga or Zenoga. I love Toby Kadachi, don't get me wrong, it's one of my favorite monsters in the world. At least the fight within like the base game. But Toby Kadachi on its own is just it's one of those monsters where you're not sure where it fits in on the spec like on the scale. Is it like a mid-tier fight? Maybe? Or should it be like an early game fight? I'd say it's like between the two. But Toby Kadachi and Rise? I'm not sure whether it's meant to be like an end game fight or not because Toby Kadachi, you fight it just before Magna Malo. I don't get why. But other than that, Toby Kadachi is a really fun fight. The Nergigante is a monster that I find to be very fun. Though it can get annoying. The first time I fought it, I absolutely hated this thing and I, it was the biggest wall in the world. Let's face it, this thing is powerful when you first fight it and if you're not prepared for it, you're not going to be able to beat it. Okay, this thing is powerful, it packs a punch. Of course it's going to pack a punch. It's Nergigante of all things and it you can see the carnage it does throughout the entire story of the world. 
until you go up to fight it, this thing has, like, been teased throughout the entire game. And it fight does not let down on that. This thing is absolutely powerful. I love Nogagante's design as well. It's so cool and so fearsome as well. That's what you expect from a monster like this. And here is the last of the spiders, Nursilla. Oh my god, I loved Nursilla when I first saw it. Many of you might be thinking, if I had arachnophobia, why am I not scared of this thing? Because this thing isn't really scary, it's actually really cool. So, Nursilla does have one thing that does creep me out, and that's its jaw attack. The attack where it extends its jaws out and just snaps at you is incredibly creepy, but I find it pretty cool. It's also one of the coolest looking spiders ever. With Ragnar Kadakius, design was cool, but Nasilla is just so much better design in my opinion. It also doesn't have an extendable neck like Ragnar Kadaki, so that's, a, that's something, right? That concludes part 4 of my ranking of the Monster and Monsters. I hope you guys are enjoying this series so far. It's been fun to record these, uh, I guess, little kind of in like opinions of the different monsters and stuff. And yeah, people aren't going to agree with all my opinions. I, I know that this part definitely will get a lot of flack for some of the placements, but I, I'm i sticking to what I, I, I think, okay? And yeah, some of my, you know, uh, kind of opinions on it aren't really talking about opinions. They're just talking about what I like, what I dislike, but that's literally just an opinion is. So, hope you all enjoyed. Stay tuned for part five. Drop a like, drop a comment, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you all in the next video. Peace out.